from our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hi, I'm Peter Burris. Welcome to another CUBE Conversation from our outstanding studios in beautiful Palo Alto, California. As we move forward with digital business and generally the very notion of data better informing human activity, the role that AI is likely to play has become an enormous topic of discussion, uh, both from the standpoint of what it can do, but also from the standpoint of what it should do and when it can and should be able to do it. Many enterprises are facing challenges to try to unlock the potential of these technologies as a consequence of a lot of technological, methodological, and other considerations. That's what we're going to talk about today, is what can enterprises do to accelerate the appropriate and proper and successful use of AI within their business. And to do that, we've got Simha Sadasava, who's the CEO of Usher with us here in theCUBE. Simha, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thanks, good to be here. So, give us a quick update. Let's start, what is Usher? Usher is a broad platform uh, to automate uh, a number of different workflows for uh, enterprise companies. Um, so I started this a little over five years back with a vision to basically drive automated customer conversations, but the more I met with customers and understood the types of problems that they were actually looking to solve, it was apparent to me that the more business processes you attach in addition to the conversational automation that you can drive through some of the new technologies that we have um, uh, available to us, you can actually impact a lot more different types of uh, outcomes for companies. So we went on to create a very broad platform that automates back office processes as well as customer conversations for a number of different uh, Fortune uh, 1000 and Global 5000 companies. All right, but let's start with this notion of how these enterprises are going to use AI better because yeah. uh, certainly our, con our, our clients are struggling with a lot of this stuff. They're, they're sometimes successful, they're often not. Yeah. And the nature of the successes sometimes are tied to a particularly successful development team or a successful choice of a tool or something else. Yeah. What is the problem, as you talk to customers, how would you generalize the problem in achieving those outcomes with AI related technologies? Yeah, so I always take this approach of uh, understanding business problems that companies are looking to solve, um, rather than just looking at technology and applying it uh, for that specific problem. Um, so as we go about learning about the industry and the transformations that are going on, every C-level uh, executive or stakeholder in a company is looking at ways and means to transform their business. So you, have, you hear this term, digital transformation, that's uh, used or that's in, it's in vogue uh, in every major enterprise uh, company that you talk to. Yeah. Uh, everyone is worried about how do they, number one, uh, stay an incumbent in their line of work without getting disrupted. B, how can they actually run their business and transform their business uh, using technology that is available to them. And also consumer behavior has evolved quite a bit over the past generation, past, past decade I should say. Uh, the ways and means that we connect and interact socially has evolved. Yeah, businesses want to interact with you in the same ways and means that you are interacting with your friends and family in a social, a social circle. Um, so there are lots of moving parts here. So. Well, let me, let me stop you there because, yeah. uh, so mm -hmm. I, as, as an industry analyst, I use the word digital transformation all the time. Right. But it actually means something, and I want to, this is what I want to test with you. So, every business constitutes its work, its workflows, its tasks, yeah. its organization, its value proposition, and how it engages customers around what it regards as its most important assets. Absolutely. To us, the very notion of the biz difference between business and digital business is a digital business treats data as an asset, which means a digital business transformation is the process of reconstituting work, value propositions, engagement models, governance models, yeah. around the idea of data as an asset. Yeah. And AI seems to me to be an essential feature of that process. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, so digital transformation is a very broad term, but what it actually means is you're moving away from paper-based forms, from record keeping. You're reconstituting that was, work. Absolutely, you're redefining how work was done. How do you 
you know, onboard employees, customers, partners, you know, from legacy forms to newer forms of engagement, newer forms of record keeping. And once they become digital, then you understand, know, and can serve those uh, those constituents a lot better. And what happens with AI is the possibilities are that you can not only drive a lot of automated ways to onboard, uh, administer, and operate those relationships, but you also learn. You learn from those uh, those engagements or those interactions, and it gets continuously better and better with time. And that's the promise of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So let, let me see if I can, because a, a thought just popped in my mind that uh, about kind of the, the history or the evolution of some of these solutions, yeah. where we had, had labor-based, physical-based activities, yeah. we uh, digitized forms, so we digitized yeah. the things that people used in those activities, right. but not necessarily the tasks that they performed. That's right. And then we ended up with, you know, things like RPA, process automation, whatnot, where we took a given set of tasks that happen on a screen, because they're now electronic, and we could turn those into robots, starting to remove the uh, some of the non-discretion work yeah. to try to better scale and try to get greater productivity. AI seems different though, right? Yeah. Because AI is not just doing things against a recipe, yeah. it's also inferencing. Yeah. It's trying to, I, I hate the word understand, but it's trying to uh, mimic at least human cognition in doing this. That's right. So is that kind of where you are now? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So these transformations uh, have happened over decades, right? So cloud was one of the first things that uh, came of age. You know, cloud started 20 years back, but now in the past 10 years, you've seen every major uh, enterprise talking about cloud-based initiatives. And then if you evolve that uh, from an automation perspective, you know, 15 years back, you had a lot of uh, companies that started with uh, RPA type solutions. And now we are talking about intelligent automation or cognitive automation. And what that means is you actually bring the power of the ability to learn, discern, understand information, understand you know, objects, understand images, understand language in ways and means that were not possible previously. Computing the access to big data, uh, uh, big databases, big data uh, handling technologies, analytics, all of these constitute and enable what's possible today with uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. And the way we look at it is um, we take these cognitive uh, systems and they provide um, solutions to problems that were previously not possible. So for example, we can take a quote intake process in an insurance company, something that would take two weeks uh, for an insurance company to respond back uh, to a quote request, uh, because they have to look and assess the risks involved with that application process. Now, if you feed an engine like Usher's with information that were made previously, um, you know, that ascertained, you know, whether this was uh, adjudicated to be accepted or rejected from a risk perspective. Now, we can actually instantaneously provide a response to a new application that comes in rather than wait for two weeks. And that's possible because we can learn and infer from past decisions that were done. And it actually drives uh, automation and drives, you know, adjudication of that specific workflow accelerates the entire time it takes to uh, make a decision. Look, Simha, I get, uh, I talk to a lot of AI companies that make yeah. a lot of claims, and each one tends to do yeah. a small part very well, yeah. and then they uh, they expand the yeah. importance of that. N yeah. No, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, everybody's struggling to try to do this better. Uh, you're taking a platform approach. Absolutely. So when I think of a platform, I think of starting all the way out from how do I approach understanding a problem yeah to the actual outcome being executed. But there's an enormous number of steps in between. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, describe how those steps are being laid out and yeah. specifically how your, your, your company is providing tooling yeah. and automation to facilitate that yeah. process. Yeah, I've done a number of uh, you know, uh, software startups in my career and uh, one of the things that I've learned, Peter, is uh, that platforms don't make good business models, but applications do. Uh, 
but you have to have a broad vision and when you want to build a platform, you have to show customers how to use the platform. So what we do is we take a template approach or a use case approach. Uh, while our platform is extremely broad, when we are talking to an insurance company versus a healthcare company versus a technology company, you have to show specific applications of how you can actually take this platform and you know, use that platform for let's say, automating the intake process in, a, in an insurance world or the claims process in an insurance world or an IT service management automation for a technology company, right? Or a prescription refill for a healthcare company. So these are all specific and uh, definitive use cases that we have templatized. And you know, we are just getting started and these templates are enormously useful for these companies to start with. Um, and they get these companies a starting point to deploy a solution in a quick and rapid. But those, those use cases or those templates um, have historically been relatively rigid. Right. And that's been one of the challenges that right. a lot of companies have had, is right. how do I fit these together? The integration work historically has been yeah. very difficult. So yeah. what, what, what I think what I think I hear you say is that, yeah, you, you need to be able to have artifacts and constructs that make sense in the context of the business problem, yeah. but you also need a simpler way Absolutely. to put those things together because increasingly these processes and activities are not siloed. They become in service to a customer right. and they have to be integrated, so the tooling has yeah. to facilitate integration yeah. and that's the platform value. Have I got that right? Is that uh, kind of the direction that Usher's taking? Yes, and the way we do that is uh, we have an orchestration platform. We call it as a zero code builder. It's a flow builder and that flow builder basically enables business teams to very quickly orchestrate their entire process flow. And then you marry this or couple this into your existing systems of records, whether they are standard platforms for customer service management or IT service management or HR management um, or vendor management. You plug this in into your existing systems of records. They could be standard platforms or they could be you know, proprietary homegrown platforms. Irrespective of what you have in your existing back office, we can plug Usher into any of these platforms ra rather instantaneously. So you got templates for integration as well as templates for outcomes. Absolutely, absolutely. And what's exciting about these technologies um, is the fact that you can actually demonstrate KPIs of 10X or more within the first six months to a year of deploying this. You're not talking about 30% you know, uh, cost optimization or improvements that are like 2X, 3X, which was typically what RPA companies uh, have you know, demonstrated. Yeah, those are good numbers. Yeah, so not that they are, you know, uh, but we are interested in transformational um, you know, KPIs, transformational experiences for enterprise companies, and I don't want to touch any automation opportunity if it does not lead to companies either making a huge saving or making significant improvements in their top line. Well, so I want to talk to you about that, because I think this is a very important point. I was talking to one of our CIO clients a couple weeks ago, yeah. uh, and, and he said something very interesting to me. He said, uh, you know, everybody talks about shadow IT. Yeah. The way that his business is now thinking about it, what used to be shadow IT is now becoming IT, yeah. and that central IT organization is becoming the shadow. Yeah. And the rationale that they were using is that the function or business unit IT groups were becoming more associated with revenue yeah. in digital business, yeah. whereas that centralized IT group remain mainly focused on cost. Mm -hmm. How is AI becoming part of that revenue generation side yeah. of IT as you get closer to those outcomes? Yeah, so AI again is uh, can be, you apply technology, both. right? So when you take an automation approach, you can apply this for a broad set of use cases, right? All the way from prospecting to you know, uh, servicing your customer, onboarding that customer, servicing, servicing that customer, retaining that customer, and upselling and cross-selling. So when you take sales enablement and you apply these cross-selling, upselling uh, opportunities with the platform, they naturally you know, give you a significant uptake in terms of uh, you know, going after your top line revenues. You're able to, um, service your opportunities a lot faster. So for example, for an insurance company, if you can reduce that court intake process from two weeks down to an hour, it puts them in a better position to actually go and win that deal. 
um, just by virtue of the fact that you're getting their work done faster. Customer sees value in the speed, shareholders see value in the efficiency. Absolutely, absolutely, Excellent. Absolutely. Excellent. absolutely. All right, so any last thoughts? Where do you think you're going to be in a year? Oh, uh, we're just getting started. I've been at this uh, for five years now, and I think the space is incredibly hot. There's a lot of hype uh, about AI, and so part of my job is to educate uh, customers on what is and what is possible and what is not possible. We we feel that we are just getting started. Like just like how 20 years back, cloud, you know, was a big deal, and then. We are still hearing companies talk about uh, cloud um, and transforming into the their workflows into the cloud. We believe that automation is an exciting uh, phase, and uh, we are on the right side of where the industry is eventually uh, uh, going. Uh, the possibilities of applying transfer learning, supervised learning from what we have done in the computer vision world to linguistics is very promising. The types of problems that we are basically solving are phenomenal. Uh, the KPIs that we can impact are very, very exciting. So I think um, if I look at this as a three to five year uh, you know, uh, roadmap of where Usher is, I want to put Usher on the global map in terms of uh, uh, being able to uh, take any workflow, take any work that goes on in the in the back office um, of a, of an enterprise, and how they service their all their stakeholders, whether they are employees, customers, partners, vendors, and impact that through a combination of microservice and micro engagement, which is uh, part of what part of our secret sauce. Excellent. Simha Sarisava is the CEO of Usher. We've been talking about the evolving role of AI and some of the new tooling as businesses try to move from an, from an orientation of uh, uh, understanding to tooling to experience to outcomes. Uh, Simha, thanks very much for being on theCUBE. Thanks Peter, thanks, good talk to you. And once again, I'm Peter Burris and this has been a CUBE Conversation. Until next time.